Hello everyone. I wanted to start off this week's episode by actually going back and discussing a little bit of what was featured last week, which was when we did the soles or the floors of the boat. I did say that I would go back and show you the finished product up here, and as you can tell, we've already turned it into a bit of a construction zone as we've continued work. We're starting to build up the webbing as this area goes up and up to eventually be the bunk for the guest side over on the uh, port hole here. But we also did get a number of questions from people about um, having it be a watertight space, uh, why we're not putting closed cell foam in there, why we're not running any wiring or plumbing in through there either. So I will hand that over to Matt to explain to you. Well, the last episode we had a ton of great questions regarding the floors and how they're all laid out. And we did want to go over that. So hopefully, I think this is the perfect area to kind of show you how that all is going to work. Um, the whole idea with this, and the reason why we're bonding these down, um, is to create as rigid of a structure as you possibly can. The side benefit we're getting from that is the fact that we're making like a double bottom in this boat. And what that means is if, if we were to rip off the whole bottom of this boat um, on a reef or something, we have this as our second bottom, our second floor, uh, basically our second structure there that's watertight. And um, this whole area below us could be completely gone and we're still going to be buoyant, we're still going to float. Um, that's the idea with it. Now on Elements, our last boat, the aluminum boat, we had a double bottom built in there. Um, so we did have that redundancy, but that was a big area. If we were to puncture just a little small area of the hull, it was going to fill up a real big area of the boat. The, the benefit with this is we have these, the webs, these pieces that go fore and aft and, and transverse side to side, um, that are making these individual cells. So now, instead of if we were to puncture, let's say this area right here, instead of it filling up this whole area, this whole underfloor area from, from bow to, to stern, it's actually just gonna fill up just this cell or the next cell next to it, whatever it does. But we still retain that buoyancy throughout the whole boat. Um, one of the other questions we got is why not fill these with closed cell foam? Well, foam, the whole idea of it and, and um, the whole premise behind it is the fact it has little air bubbles in it. The air is what actually is keeping it buoyant or is what making it, it, it buoyant. So by having these individual cells that are what, two feet long, two and a half feet long, whatever they are, I can't remember what it is now, and this wide, we are making these individual little like foam pieces basically, and that's what's keeping us buoyant here. So there's really, it'd be redundant, it'd be on top of the redundancy that we already have, having closed cell foam, because it really doesn't matter. If we were to puncture this part of the hull here, it's not going to spill over and spill into a next other area um, because we do have this double floor set up and we have these webs set up. So we really don't need it. It would be a lot of extra weight to, because closed cell foam actually does weigh a lot. It does get waterlogged um, quite quite common. If you look at like old Boston whalers, they had closed cell foam in them. And those are triple the weight of what they are now because of that water just kind of sucked into there. So we want to prevent that from happening um, by not having it there. And it's a cost situation too. It's expensive and again, there's no purpose. Um, so that's the idea here. The other question too is why not have conduit running back and forth or ways to run the wire? Um, um, that really isn't necessary in this. Anytime you do a penetration of one of these bulkheads with a piece of conduit, it's very difficult to secure it. You can secure it temporarily um, or fairly rigidly, but you can imagine if we were to hit on the bottom multiple times, it, it's a pretty good chance it's gonna crack. That's the weakest point. And then that's gonna allow water to go from this cell into this cell, into that cell, and just keep working its way through wherever that conduit ran. So if we can reduce that, perfect. That's the idea. The other thing too is, You'll see later on, but we have um, pieces, frames, webs that uh, like look like shells, but those are structural frames that run fore and aft along here, basically this height, and then along this height as well. Well, that makes perfect area to run it above the water line, run all of our wire and fuel and water and all that kind of stuff from side to side along here. We're trying to keep everything inboard, so there really isn't a big reason to have wire ran in this side at all or water ran in this side. Everything can run along the inboard side and along this chamfer panel, the slope here. 
Um, the electrical, the batteries, all that stuff is gonna be up on the bridge deck, so centralized location. Everything can run here, panel, all that kind of stuff running along this side. This side really isn't necessary to run anything. So that's kind of the reason we can get it all above the water line, easier to work on then, and easier to run new wires through conduit. Um, when it's all up here, I can inspect it, all that kind of stuff. And I don't have to worry about it penetrating this area. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. <laughs> Hola. Hola. Do you need to stop the music for a bit? No, because this is all just going to be like voiceover. Let me dance now. Mm hmm. Now that we were finally able to get an order in to restock our vinyl ester resin, we felt comfortable going back to projects which required it and we could use up the little bit we had left. One of those steps we've been holding off on was glassing the interior seam of where we had bonded on our hull sides. Although we've been able to fill some of the gap between the flanges with our methacrylic during the process of bonding the two pieces together, we still wanted to create a nice ramp for our fiberglass to lay on. And Matt did that by using our thickened vinyl luster. Once it had been applied, we let it cure just enough to be tacky. One of the benefits for us doing that is it has become firm enough to hold its shape where we need it to, but still has enough flexibility so that any potential hard spots can be pushed out with our roller. Letting Matt lead by wetting the area down with resin, I followed along behind and covered the flanges with our 12 ounce double bias fiberglass. It was thoroughly coated in resin, and then I went back to add a second layer. While Matt stuck with the job of applying resin, I followed just behind with a fin roller in my hand, ready to push out any excess air that was trapped between the two layers. And for the final touch, a layer of peel ply. Today's challenge, we are going to see how much of our remaining three gallons of vinyl ester resin we can use up. Of course, with the shortage, we've been a little tentative of where we wanted to use it, but now that we have some more on order, we just wanna get it out. So the project we are going to work on is putting the webbing pieces in um, forward of bulkhead four and bulkhead five. And forward of bulkhead four, they're just going to be um, kind of like structural but the ones between four and five are going to end up as compartments. The center one will be for our anchor chain and windlass. Yeah, it's making all kinds of noise in there. 
And then we're thinking that the two outer sides are going to be our water tanks, although nothing's been fully decided yet. Over the past few days, we've been preparing the forward webbing to go in. Since most of the structural pieces that have been shipped over from Max Cruz have an extra layer of glass to protect the edges, Matt went through to trim them and fit them down to size. So here's about two hours worth of work trimming these down. Um, it turned out really, really well. I'm using that circular saw to just kind of run along the edge as it showed. They're CNC cut and then laminated after the fact. And so that extra little glass on the side is actually not needed. Um, I didn't quite realize that, so I've been wasting a lot of time with a jigsaw and stuff like that, trying to get a little bit smoother on an edge. This works a lot better. Uh, luckily, the almost all the other pieces are already CNC cut without that extra lamination on top of them, so I won't have to do that anymore. Uh, of course, the last couple of boards are where I kind of figure this out now, finally, but for anyone else that's going to be doing this type of kit, that is how to do it. Just take this circular saw, run it along the edge, and it's actually a real simple process. Now that the boards have been trimmed, it was time to fit them in place, making sure they fit the upward slope of the bridge deck, finding their spacing, and getting them plumb. And then, for the fun part which never gets shown, but has become the bane of my existence, especially in the summer heat, prepping every surface which will be bonded by giving it a scuff sand, which includes not only the webbing pieces, but the spots on the bulkhead which will be adhering them to. So I have just cut out, oh gosh, 110 pieces of fiberglass. I have them all laid out, marked neatly, and we're starting the clock a little cooler today, but we're gonna see how far we can get based on resin and time. I'm going to be frank with you guys. Unless this is your first time to our channel for the catamaran build, which if it is, thanks for stopping by. But if not, you probably know the process by now. In fact, you just saw it during our last segment. We make a cove with thickened resin, let it get tacky, wet out the area with more resin, lay down the glass, wet that out, and then get rid of the air bubbles. We've done it so many times now, I'm not sure what new things I can bring to the table when describing it. So instead, I'll use this time to answer a question about the general process. Last week, Neil asked, it would be great if you had a scene with what you do with your glassing tools. Do you clean them or dispose after each use? Except for the tongue depressors in which we use to mix the resin, most of our tools get reused every single time we do this. In our quiver, we have too many rollers and two metal rollers, which at the end of each use, get placed into a 32 ounce container filled with Total Boat's Eco Solvent. They sit there until ready for their next use, and so far, it's done a great job. We have had to add two new metal rollers to our collection since we began six months ago, but that's usually our own fault for leaving it out too long to the point where the resin begins to cure between the blades. Ah. 
After this section is done, Matt gets to go on the other side and work, but that's where it starts to slope down a lot into what's going to be our vanity. So I don't envy him as he's balancing himself, trying to get these perfect codes and roll everything in. Um, I'm sure I'll get paid back soon with a bunch of sanding. End of work day one and what we were able to do is basically half of the webbings. We did the very forward parts and the ones between bulkhead four and five on the starboard side of the boat. And it took us, what time did we start? Around four and now it's eight, so four hours overall, not too bad. And then um, tomorrow we're gonna go through and do the other half, but then it'll be really exciting to start planning out the space for those water tanks. Hello everyone, I am once again coming to you from the Hall of Fame, which is starting to really add up here. This wall is already full, and I think in a few more weeks or months we might be moving over to another hall because this is going to be full. Another exciting thing and so nice when I step in here now is guess what? We have a soul. And actually one of the things that we're going to be working on tonight is, the brackets are in, because this is actually going to get raised up a little higher. Not the point. Anyway, the point of this area is we are saying thank you to all of our patrons who, without their support, we would not be able to do this build. We would not be able to put out the videos documenting it for you every week. So a huge thank you to them. And part of the small ways we can say thank you is to get everybody's name up on the hull which will be permanently here. We're going to eventually gloss this over so that whenever we go to grab vendors or change out sales, we will be reminded of all the amazing people that let us get out on this boat. So thank you to them. And up on the wall today, we've got a few shout outs. First, I want to say a big thank you to our silver level supporters. We've got Charles Johnson here and Stacy Bright down here. And just a couple other little VIP shout outs. We want to say thank you to Anne Courtois, who has really helped us with items off of our Amazon wish list, and she even got Matt one of those cooling vests, which I don't know if he would have gotten through the summer without the help of that. And we also have Heidi in Franny's garage here. And we just wanted to give them a little thanks for all of their wonderful comments and messages whenever we post anything on patrons. And as you can see, we've got such a great group here, a really great family that has been supporting us throughout this entire build. So again, to patrons, thank you. And for anyone else who is interested in becoming a patron, getting your name up on this wall and other benefits like private meetups we're having at Boat Show, including coming to this boat and seeing the build in person, make sure to follow the link in the description below or the box up in the corner here to get all of the details on that. And we hope you enjoyed this episode and we hope that your name gets up here pretty soon too.